Yeah! Yeah! How about that raw? Awesome shit! Finally, after what, like five fucking years, we get chair shots to the head. Fucking hardcore wrestling. And Daniel Bryan making that bitch, that boring motherfucker. The man who buries everybody. Orton not only get not not only losing, but tapping out like a little bitch to Daniel Bryan. I know it's fake as shit, but as a wrestling fan, these are the moments that you live for. I mean, seriously. I have waited a very long time, a very fucking long time, to see somebody I actually like going over Randy Orton clean. And it has happened tonight. I don't know what it was, what was in the air. I talked about how WWE has been improving, and tonight they... They really showed it. You, you, you know, it wasn't a perfect show, but let's get right into it. First, we start off, we think we're going to get Orton and Brian to start off the show, but instead it's a brawl that ends in a double DQ, but it's a, that's a fucking awesome brawl to start off the show. They're throwing each other everywhere. They're fighting against the barricades, fighting into people. It's a pull-apart brawl, but not like some pussy pull-apart brawl with The Rock. You know, where, where they're not even, like, you know, like, barely touching each other. No, this was full-on contact. It was brutal. It was like a real fucking fight. Looked very realistic. Then we get McMahon backstage, and for some reason, he's bashing Daniel Bryan, saying he doesn't like him. I don't see the point to this. He doesn't want to see the match. Uh, says this to Vicky Guerrero. After Daniel Bryan demands to have a match, he gives him the match, but Vince McMahon bashes him. I don't know. I guess Vince McMahon can't help himself. He has to bash Daniel Bryan on the show, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> we have to put up with some bullshit. Then it's uh, Sheamus and Christian defeating the Road Scholars. Okay match. Nothing spectacular here, but, you know, decent wrestling match. Okay, nothing bad, nothing too good. But acceptable. Then it's uh it's Caitlyn defeating Oksana. AJ comes out dressed up like Caitlyn in a muscle suit. That was a little bit funny. She makes fun of her voice. You know, like I, I it wasn't like <laughs> type of laughter, but you know, I guess it was acceptable comedy. It wasn't any type of like ultra retarded comedy. I mean you could say it was a little bit too much with the muscle suit. It might have looked a little goofy. But, uh, you know, it was all right. She makes fun of Ram's apple and says her voice is as deep as Biggie Langston. So it's, uh, you know, it's funny. It's a knock against her. And, uh, you know, it's better. Better insults than we hear from the guys most of the time. Diva's division is improving. Then you got uh, Chris Jericho defeating Alberto Del Rio by disqualification. This was a great fucking match. A lot of counters. The way Jericho reversed the cross arm breaker was, was kind of actually pretty incredible. It was very well done. You know, it ended in a DQ. Uh, but still, you know, it, it was a great match and it was enjoyable. There seems to be some tension brewing between Ziggler and... And um, and Jericho, Ziggler comes in later on. Um, so there might be a match down the line. So, you know, at least it looks like they've got plans for the future. It's good. You know, they actually seem like they have a, you know, a path that they're traveling on. Not just blindly booking shit. So that's definitely a big improvement over what we've seen in the past. Then uh, you got Triple H backstage and he... Says that he likes Daniel Bryan. So at least there's some one of the McMahons to counteract the bashing. I don't know why this even needs to be there. They want to show a power struggle, but it's not really that effective. You know, it really isn't that effective at all. It's just basically a couple of comments. It's not really like any type of controversial shit. I don't, they're going for some type of major conflict, I guess. I, but it's it's not working. Um, 
Triple H says he wants to see the match. He doesn't want to see it canceled. There's going to be a vote later on. Uh, then we got our next segment. 1-800-FAIL. I mean, fella. Sheamus saves a cat from a tree. And uh, there, there's, and, and then a granny is attracted to him. She wants to suck his dick. So the grandma goes chasing after Seamus' cock. You know, uh, it, it, you know, this is the thing. If you want to write comedy into the show, go ahead and put comedy in the show. There's no need to take a separate vignette an extra video, like on location, shooting a video outside the arena just to attempt to be funny and miserably failing. I'm, I, you know, I, I saw this video earlier today. It was posted on Facebook on the WWE's uh, page on there. And I see a bunch of goofballs praising this shit. And I'm like, you know, and I'm looking at the pictures of the people. They're all people my age, people well into their 20s. And if you're a fan of this type of comedy, shame on you. Just fucking shame on you. You, you should probably go back to high school. Nay, go back to junior high. Go back to fucking preschool. Because if you think this shit is funny, you're a fucking retard. I mean, it's like, it's not anything that's going to ruin the show. But it's very stupid to make comedy on a wrestling show that has... Nothing to fucking do with the actual show itself. It, it makes no fucking sense. Then uh, you got a big unveiling for the uh, the 2K14 covers. Um, you had some attempts at humor here. Vicky Guerrero interrupting. The whole fucking crowd was booing her like louder than I ever heard before. Um, you had a pretty decent crowd in there. Um, you know, I'm not one of these people who are like ultra into the show. You know, a lot of these people I see on the comments go like, if it doesn't get a good crowd reaction, I'm not going to be into it, no matter how good the match is. You know, these people make me sick to my stomach. But, uh, you know, uh, funny how they were booing the shit out of her. Because um, I never heard such a negative reaction like that. I haven't heard a negative reaction like that in a while. She shows the McMahons and Stephanie, uh, Triple H, and Vince McMahon all on the same cover. Then Brad Maddox. What the fuck is this motherfucker still doing there? Why is he still working there? Anyway, he shows his cover. He's on the cover, and uh, I forget who was surrounding him. Oh, I think it's um, CM Punk and somebody else on the cover. I, I, I don't fucking know. Um, anyway... Who's on the main cover? The Rock. Now, I know it's just a video game, but still, I do buy these games. I bought WWE 12 and WWE 13. So, I think I deserve a moment to rant on this fucking video game. Now, no bashing against the game itself. 2K Sports is a pretty popular developer, so I'm sure they're going to do the game justice. I'm sure it's going to turn out to be a pretty good game. But can you tell me this? Why the fuck is The Rock on the fucking cover of the fucking game? What the fuck are they thinking here? I mean, who, which fucking jabronis? It's, you know, coincidental. The Rock jabronis came up with this fucking idea. Was it Vince? Was it the developers? I don't know. I knew ahead of time. I knew months in advance it was announced at The Rock, even since last year. Since last year almost, or at the very beginning of the year, when 2K Sports took over. We fucking knew that The Rock was going to be on the cover of 2K14. And guess what? I was pissed off then, but now it really set in. Because now everything has been confirmed with The Rock. The motherfucker is never coming back. Everybody defended The Rock. They said he's here for us. Guy comes back, the, puts in a shit performance. A shitty fucking performance with shitty fucking promos and shitty fucking matches. And guess what? So how do they reward this guy? A guy who has said that he's never coming back because he's happy turning his back on his fans who he came back for, by the way. And now it's headed off to Hollywood. 
So how do they reward this man? You know, they should do they should give him the fucking Chris Benoit treatment. Fucking erase that motherfucker's name from history. Instead, they put him on the fucking cover of one of the biggest selling things for them. Their fucking video game. Now, people will defend this. He's a legend. He deserves it. Oh, yeah? To tell you the truth, I don't like John Cena. I hate John Cena. But guess what? I think that John Cena would be better off on the cover. You know why? Because this year, the guy has actually had some good matches. Other than that, he's there all the time. Which, by the way, you don't have to be a fan. Think about this by not being biased for a minute. He's there all the time and he's the face of the company. So it would make sense. And why does it have to be one guy on the cover? Why can't there be multiple guys? Why can't you have CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, The Shield, Undertaker on there? Like there used to. There used to be a shitload of fucking guys on there. Remember the cover of Shut Your Mouth? I, I like that idea. It had Triple H, RVD, Booker T on there. I'm just going off the top of my head. You know, it, it's okay. It, it makes sense, though, when the catchphrase is there. Here comes the pain. Brock Lesnar was on the cover. Uh, just bring it. The Rock was on the cover. So it made perfect sense. But now you're getting The Rock on the cover. His name ain't anywhere in the title. So what the fuck is he doing there? He ain't in the company anymore. He's not on the payroll anymore. He has nothing to do with WWE anymore. And I don't even think there's going to be an Attitude Era remote in the game. So what the fuck is the point? Is Stone Cold going to be in there? I don't even think he is. I think they're done with that Attitude Era shit. I think that was a THQ thing. I don't think they're going back to that. It, it probably is not going to play as big of a role as it was in the last game. So why the fuck is he there? <sighs> but I digress. Next up, it's Ryback defeating a great Kali. You know, this was, it was okay. You got to laugh at Kali just totally missing a punch. Like, why the fuck is he still there? Why did they pay this guy to just lumber around the ring like a big goof? Can you tell me that? He picks him up, Ryback picks him up and drops him down, which is impressive, I guess. But we've seen we've seen Cena do this, who is, you know, actually smaller than Ryback. So why uh, am I supposed to be surprised by this? But uh, I guess it was okay, short, effective, whatever. Um, then you got Cena coming to the ring for a promo. Holy fucking shit, was this a boring fucking promo. I know I'm going to repeat myself here, but listen to the fucking crowd here, people. Listen with your fucking ears with these goddamn things. The whole crowd is booing him. Not only that, it's a totally unrealistic promo. He's bashing Mark Henry for, for what he's doing, saying that nobody liked it. Everybody liked it last week. Even me. Praise that segment with Mark Henry. So he comes off looking like a total fucking goofball. You know how they like to bash the internet fans? Well, the internet fans, the YWC, even the crazy people out there, still like the fucking segment. So now Cena looks like one of those crazy people that WWE likes to talk about. Like in JR's blog all the time about the people that are never satisfied. So what the fuck's going on here? What, are they turning the tables? Are they trying to troll us or some shit? I think it's fucking stupid. Because everybody liked it. It would have made sense for Cena to at least come off a little bit cool. I mean, he is the champion. Supposed to be the face of the company. A face of the company, everybody's fucking booing. How much sense does it make? Not only that he's the face of the company, everybody fucking hates his guts. But that he's a baby face and they're booing him. I mean, seriously. How can you be a baby face when the majority of the crowd is booing you? It used to be 50-50, but now it's more 75% to be quite honest. And he comes off as a fucking nerd in this promo. Oh, I think that it was wrong when he did. Shut the fuck up and get out. Seriously, the whole crowd... If, you know, if you didn't turn on Cena, I think even the biggest Cena fans... I think even Sean's View Entertainment has to even admit that John Cena came off as a fucking nerd in this fucking promo. Come on, Sean. 
If you're watching, I want you to admit in your review, if you haven't already done it, I want you to admit that Cena looked like a fucking nerd. Come on, buddy. Come on, you gotta admit it. He did look like a fucking nerd. I mean, come on, that was... Uh, what, 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 that was Mark Henry's best performance there. And he comes out looking like a nerd. Got to give the man credit. Even if it's scripted, you know, still, you got to give a nod so the character don't look nerdy. Then it's the Usos defeating 3MB and Tons of Funk in a triple threat tag match for number one contendership. Um, You know, we all know that the Shield's going to beat them. Uh, this was an all right match. It was like two minutes long. It, you know, it didn't slow down. It was just fast paced. It, it got done what they needed to do, Um, you know. There's not a lot of tag teams, so the Usos won, and this is what they were going to do with the last pay-per-view. But, I mean, seriously, just because the Usos have painted their face does not make them look like viable contenders for the tag titles. You can't just suddenly scoop up a tag team, change nothing about them, except for the fact that they're wearing just a little bit of face paint on them. And throw them into a match against a team as over as the Shield and expect them to pose a threat. You know, this is the problem. Wrestling is fake. So you have to make sure that the two guys you pit or the four guys, you know, if it's a tag team match, that it, it looks like that the other guy has a chance against the champions. Otherwise, why the fuck care? You have no reason to care about this match because you know that the Usos are going to like job out in like five minutes in this match. They're not going to give the match much time at all. You know, it's different when the Shield has, you know, uh, challenging opponents. But this is, this is a tag team that usually wrestles on superstars, for goodness sake. And most of the time, they just ship them off to NXT. So, I, I don't know. Then uh, we got Paul Heyman and CM Punk. And, um, you know, Heyman tells Punk he had nothing to do with the Lesnar attack. There was some good acting in here. They built some good drama up. You, uh, Punk talks a little bit about how Heyman helped them. Goes in pretty deep about them. You know, it, um, you know, continuing on with your heard in the past, like on the Punk DVD and other Punk, uh, Paul Heyman and, and uh, CM Punk shoot videos. You might be watching on the internet. Um, so we, it was decent. You know, nothing like incredible or nail-biting. But it was perfectly, you know, good, um, decent. And, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it was good. But I would have liked to see just like right here, Heyman. If they, I mean, okay, maybe they could just have one week where he's lying to him. But next week, just have... Lesnar attack him and Heyman standing over his body and just, you know, telling him, like, I lied. I hate you, you know, and all that. Um, so then after that, really random, Darren Young comes out to have a match with CM Punk, which is just weird. Um, this match was not that bad, actually. I can't really say that CM Punk looked very motivated in this match, but it was still, you know, pretty decent. And Darren Young got in a shitload of offense. There were moments in this match where he was just downright dominating Punk, and it was it was a decent length. It doesn't even really qualify as a squash by you know squash standards. There was near falls in this match. Darren Young hits his finisher, and you've got like a near fall in there. Uh, you knew he wasn't going to win, but Still, um, it was a decent match. I mean, uh, but I don't know why they're putting so much stock in Darren Young. The the real star of this team is Titus O'Neil. He's the funny one. He's the one that knows how to talk. Um, then at the end, the primetime players start beating up on CM Punk. Um, and this is just weird to see a rivalry with, with Punk and the primetime players. I realize that they're just buying time. You know, for CM Punk and, and Lesnar, but I really, really think that they should have brought RVD back earlier, not just have him at Money in the Bank, because he really kind of needs a top tier feud here. Like I said, like I'm not knocking the match, 
Darren Young and CM Punk was a perfectly acceptable match. I mean, it wasn't boring. It wasn't bad. It was a decent match between the two. But you can even tell that CM Punk is just like, I'm better than this. I shouldn't be really wrestling this jobber here on, on Raw. Um, so that that was just weird. And then, as I said, they gang up on him, and, and Heyman comes in, he brings in Curtis Axel. Um, and that was just very, very odd. And then we find out that we're getting Curtis Axel and CM Punk versus the primetime players, which is interesting. I, I like that they're doing new things, but you know that the primetime players are just going to be off TV after next week, because that next week will probably be where Heyman just totally turns on Punk, and Curtis Axel and Lesnar will just probably beat down on Punk. That that's what I see happening. Um, but you know, it's good to see like that we're actually predicting these things, and there's intrigue in what's going to happen. So WWE is is definitely succeeding with that because they've got me thinking. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's about time that I start having to think about what's going to happen in wrestling. And I just don't know what's going to happen just like that. I mean, you know that Heyman's going to turn on him. But, you know, when's it going to happen? How they're going to go about it? That's what makes it interesting. And, you know, it's it's good. Then we get the Money in the Bank participants. And I don't know about anybody else, but I sort of miss when guys had to qualify. Um, but... Uh, this Money in the Bank roster that they got, it's pretty damn good. And it's got pretty much most of um, guys that you would like to see in a dream match. You've got RVD in there, Punk, and Daniel Bryan. And right there, that would be a perfectly acceptable little thing there. They got Christian in there, too. So you got like a four-way Money in the Bank. I'd be perfectly satisfied. But the fact that they have Orton, Sheamus, and Kane in there, it's basically like four good wrestlers and three jobbers, basically. <laughs> now, I know it's silly to say that Orton's a jobber, but really, as far as talent goes, that's all it is. And yeah, and I'm very excited to see that RVD is coming back. <laughs> Let me clarify. I am a fan of the WWE RVD. Not the TNA RVD, but the WWE one. So, you know, just just basically deal with it. <laughs> I am an RVD fan. Always have been. Just didn't like the TNA RVD. The TNA RVD was washed up. Never said that I didn't like RVD. Then you got Mark Henry coming out. What a pretty damn good promo. Pretty good promo here, I gotta say. Guy has very much improved on the mic. I mean, like, during the attitude here, he's funny as sexual chocolate, but that was mostly because it was skits. But he's done a very good job of creating a tough guy persona on the mic. Um, so that was a pretty good promo, I have to say. He came off as pretty damn fucking tough in it. Um... And, yeah, I mean, I'm not looking forward to that match at all. I know it's going to suck, but um, good promo from Henry. Anyway, um, up next, we've got Daniel Bryan and Orton in a street fight. And holy fucking shit, this was fucking awesome. Awesome fucking match. We got a fucking, not only one, but two chair shots to the head. One where Orton is holding it as Brian is going for a suicide dive. Smashes that fucker in the head. Then, again, as Brian is running at him, he throws the chair in his face. I don't know why I thought that they get fined for these chair shots to the head, but we got two of them. And they weren't like cheap chair shots. They were like, you know, right to the head. Like, boom. Like, big fucking shots. Powerbomb through the table. Some A lot of great counters. A lot of uh, kendo stick shots here. Like, not cheap ones, but good ones. 
Um, Orton did botch a T-bone suplex through the table. Didn't get him right, but come on, it's Orton. We got to cut him a break. The guy sucks. We all know it. Um, uh, but the thing is, Daniel Bryan making that motherfucker tap out. It's about fucking time. What the fuck took so long? But I don't even fucking care. It happened. Orton tapped. It was a definitive way. A convincing victory. Daniel Bryan just takes the kendo stick and starts using it against Orton. And pulls it against his face. It's an incredible moment. And, you know, right here... Um, Orton could have turned heel, but once again, they don't go that route. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, I, I was happy with this match. Um, awesome Raw. Awesome. Um, a lot of great moments, some good promos, and for the most part, I enjoyed myself. And you had two awesome matches on this card. And that is good enough for me to say that this show is awesome. I mean, because... You know, to have matches that were this fucking good, it was like Attitude Era quality matches tonight. So, um, pay-per-view quality shit. So, I really don't have a lot of room to complain. I mean, I complained in this review, but don't get me wrong. I mean, this show was quality. It's three hours. This show, oh my god. This show would have been perfect if it was two hours. And they just cut out a lot of that meaningless shit that they put in there. And, um, you know, this would have been a top-notch show if it was two hours. It's a shame. But but for a three-hour Raw, this was definitely one of the best three-hour Raws I've ever seen. Just great fucking matches, some good moments. And the only way I could really think of how this night could have been better if, if Lesnar were actually there. But he'll probably be there next week. So, um, yeah. Gotta say, you know, it, uh, I, I'm not getting my hopes up, but WWE is slightly improving. Because they've been delivering some pretty good shows as of late. So, so yeah, I am perfectly satisfied with this episode of Raw. Great entertainment. Awesome show. <laughs> Alright.